shape the technology industry agenda of Ghana for now and future generations. Today is the mission of the Ghana Chamber of Technology and its CEO, Derry Dean Dazi, joins me at Telecop Africa 2019 in the capital of Accra, which has seen a lot of technology investments recently. Uh, Derry Dean, thanks a lot for talking to me. What's currently happening in, in Ghana that's making this such a booming market compared to other African yeah. sports? There's a lot going on in Ghana um, in recent times uh, because of one, the environment. Um, the environment is um, very friendly um, for digital businesses. There's also broad awareness of digitization. So we have a lot of companies that are trying to embark on a digital transformation journey. Um, we have government that is very keen on trying to put Ghana on a digital pedestal um, that makes it very compelling to live in, even for the citizens. Um, so Ghana, Ghana is more or less trying to become a very digitally transformed um, country uh, with a lot of our social services, a lot of our economic services. More or less, it's a, the, the economy actually going digital. But th what that means then is that it is paving the way for innovation. That means that there's, uh, there is that uh, stimulator, if, if I may say, um, for different people, in, especially young people, to now put together company because of the innovative ideas that they have, you know, to drive it. And what that means is that you're also going to require a lot of supporting services to drive that digital agenda. And that is why I believe that Ghana is booming, mm. because the factors the factors, more or less, coming together. are coming together, yeah. 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 It's the perfect storm mm -hmm. happening over Ghana. The, 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 the elements yeah. <laughs> are working in our favor. Yeah. And then in terms of the, the Ghana Chamber of Technology, what are you guys doing to help support all this, especially around IT infrastructure, so telecommunications, data centers, cloud? Um, what's the Chamber doing? What, what the Chamber does is that we are continuously working with the stakeholders. Uh, we have government as a major stakeholder because government is responsible for laying the blueprint and also ensuring that all the, the issues are addressed through policy. So as part of our work, we work with government in developing or drafting the right policies that can empower or that can stimulate the, the component in the ecosystem that will make the ecosystem thrive. So one of the key things, for example, is one major government stakeholder that we work with because of fintechs is the Bank of Ghana where we work with the Bank of Ghana to put out, let's say, the, the Ghana payment strategy or to work with them on the Ghana Payment Systems Act, right, to work with them on, on, on different, in different dimensions, all in the bid to build a very robust um, fintech ecosystem. Mm -hmm. and, and we do the same with other government agencies as the Ministry of Communication. So the, 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 the Chima plays a very instrumental role in shaping the policy direction because when we have the right and sound policies, what you do is that you're going to, you're able to create thriving economies within the ecosystem that will make startups and businesses very successful. So that's what we're doing. So you're almost like the bridge between government and people out there. Well, definitely. So we, we, we play advocacy role. Okay, yeah. Um, trying to ensure that what, what, is, what is right out there, what mm. has to happen, trying to sound it to the stakeholders and the powers that be to ensure that those things are enabled or those things are unwrapped mm. and put into the, to the environment. So th there is so much that we are doing um, in the ecosystem. So we are the, let's say, the fulcrum mm. around which technology conversations um, are hard, initiatives mm. are on, on, on uncovered. And then we're we working with all the stakeholders, not necessarily only government, um, the development organizations, sometimes some consulting companies, sometimes some um, companies uh, with, a, with a technology agenda to collaborate with them to ensure that we can have a thriving technology ecosystem. Okay. Uh, when you work so closely with the government, what, be, what sort of things are they still in need to take action on? What would you like to see the government doing more to really boost even more the technology sector? I believe that um, is a journey, mm. um, and especially this government is very keen on the data transformation of our economy. So one of the key areas that government looks at is infrastructure, because without the right infrastructure, uh, you can't have a thriving um, digital economy. Mm. One of the key areas that government also looks at 
uh, is skills development mm -hmm. uh, without without the digital literacy or without the requisite skills, you can have a thriving digital economy. Yeah, you don't have a future. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, the other thing that I believe that government will look will, will have to look at, and I believe that they are actually doing so, is a, is a, is a soft infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Looking at the policies, looking at the regulations, looking at the 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 organization of the digital ecosystem. Okay. But I believe that, that, that those are some of the things that government should look at. I know some they are doing, but I know that there's some that is, a, a, there's, there's a lot of room, you know, to do more uh, within the space. So is the, for example, the school curriculum and universities starting to look more into technology? Um, are kids being more involved in STEM? Um, so science, mathematics, all those sort of things. Um, is coding a big thing here as well for, for children? Yeah, coding, co coding, coding is a big thing. Um, these days, vacation classes during the summer, so summer classes in the summer, a lot of Ghanaian children actually take on extra academic work. And one of the key things that young people are learning is how to code. And we have mm. different ecosystem partners or different ecosystem entities, um, digital entities that actually driving their digital literacy agenda. They, they've set up hubs, they've set up schools, they set up incubators that are driving digital literacy, including things like coding. There are companies like Dreamoval that, that is actively um, pushing the digital literacy agenda by training hundreds of thousands of youth and very young people, uh, for that matter, on how to code. Um, and we have organizations, we have banks, we have other organizations that are not necessarily tech, but are actually interested in the technology ecosystem and are investing a lot in digital incubators and training programs um, to help bolster the, the digital literacy of the people and also to help create a, an ecosystem that is beneficial to everybody. And as you are so involved with the, the Ghana technology scene, what do you envision for the future? Can we have, for example, the next Uber coming out of Ghana? Can we have a Microsoft Cloud coming out of Ghana in the future? What, what do you envision for the long term? Right. Um, so I believe that Ghana is one of the most innovative countries. Um, we have um, the kind of environment that stimulates and that makes innovation drive. So what I'm seeing is that we have a lot of tech startups that are coming up. We also have a lot of um, big businesses and tech organizations coming into Ghana to set up hubs and to, to set up very purpose-driven um, technology vehicles to drive the technology agenda. Mm -hmm. So we have Google setting up C squared to drive AI. We have um, Oracle set, setting up Godep. So we have a lot of um, industry players, big name. yeah, big name players actually coming in um, to establish um, frontiers in, in this economy. So what that means is that one, we're going to get a lot of people who are digitally aware, who understand the problems of the people and we're going to out of the problems of the people come up with solutions that can scale mm. and scale just not just beyond not just in Ghana but can scale beyond um, the shores of Ghana mm. one of the key things that we are looking at is also the Africa continent the Africa Continental Free Trade Act mm. which is very very important what that means is that the market is going to be open people are digitally aware people understand their digital relevance of solving problems. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have prop solutions that are coming out of this country from Ghanaians and from non ghanaians but who have um, foundations in Ghana, who have um, setups in Ghana that will be utilized in other part of Africa. So I, I see um, a very compelling uh, future for technology players and people who want to solve global problems at all levels. Mm -hmm. And um, I believe that Ghana has the political environment, the social climate. It has everything that um, it Indeed. takes to make um, an organization thrive. Yeah. Yeah. Beyond the world stage. Most definitely. <laughs> Most de and, and yeah, and, and I believe that um, we also note that Ghana geographically sits at a very central mm. point <laughs> on Earth. So in terms of access, um, there's a very, uh, I believe that is a very profound um, selling point mm. in terms of access by different kinds of players. Yeah.
And when yeah. you have digital economy, everything is digital as well, so everything just helps. Yeah. Uh, and then, as I said in my introduction, we are at Data Cloud Africa 2019 here in Accra, in Ghana. Right. Um, what does event, an event like this mean to Ghana? <laughs> what I see is it's, it's more or less on Earth. All the possibilities around data, around infrastructure, around storage, around data centers, and uh, it, it brings out the core um, conversation point um, to be had. If, if you look at our, our, our continent, and for that matter, West Africa, and to, to a large extent, Africa, our data and privacy um, has a lot to be worked on. Um, data centers are very important, but they are not very prominent in our part of the world. We depend a lot on outside infrastructure um, for data storage. But looking at privacy, looking at sometimes the political dynamics, uh, looking at the globalized nature of our world, I believe that every country should position um, on how it wants to handle its citizen data, its national data, and conferences like this one organized by Data Cloud, you know, um, helps lay down the the structures and lay down the the foundation to have the conversations to put the component and the elements together to more or less determine the, the, the path when it comes to data centers, when it comes to cloud infrastructure, when it comes to privacy, when it comes to how to handle uh, issues around technology infrastructure in general. Yeah, it gets the message out there. Yeah. Um, all right, Derry Dean, thanks for talking to me. And thanks for having uh -huh. me. Don't forget you can follow Data Economy on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram, and also visit the website on www.data-economy.com.